Hello and welcome to Comfort and Joy. I hope you're enjoying this Advent devotional series. Our carol today is the newest we'll be thinking about, Stuart Townend and Keith Getty's song, Joy Has Dawned. The words of the carol say, Gifts of men from distant lands prophesy the story. Gold, a king is born today. Incense, God is with us. Myrrh, his death will make a way, and by his blood he'll win us. What kind of gifts do you give a new baby? Or his parents? Bestsellers in the UK in recent years include a baby food processor set, muslin cloths, and a musical cop mobile. Practicality and amusement are recurring themes. What must new mother Mary have made of the gifts that were given to the infant Jesus? Gold was, of course, then as now, of great value. But why the expensive perfumes, frankincense and myrrh, unless they were also to be sold to pay for an upcoming trip to Egypt? The mysterious wise men from the East, or magi from the rising sun, are the first people in the Bible who are said to worship Jesus. Now, there is some ambiguity here because the Greek word for worship can mean pay homage. In other words, Matthew's not necessarily implying that the Magi recognised Jesus as God, although, of course, the Christian reader of his gospel knows better. Perhaps because so little is known about the Magi from Scripture, various traditions have arisen to explain their origin. For example, the popular carol, We Three Kings of Orient Are, which doesn't feature in this series, follows ancient legend in identifying the wise men by name, as well as church tradition in numbering them as three, something the Bible doesn't tell us. Magi were quite possibly stargazers of some description. The association of the stars with occult practices later gave us our English word magic, but we should probably think of them as less like our present day astrologers with their crystal balls and newspaper horoscopes, and more like the scientists of their day, observing the patterns and the changes in the heavens. The reason the Magi are sometimes identified as kings is that various Old Testament prophecies describe the Messiah being worshipped by kings, representing the nations. But the French reformer John Calvin called the identification of the Magi as kings a ridiculous contrivance, and given that the New Testament gives us no explicit reason to make the link, we might be tempted to concur. Calvin is similarly unpersuaded by the popular view, dating back to the second century theologian Irenaeus, that the gifts given to the infant Christ by the Magi have symbolic significance. For Calvin, these are mere speculations with, he says, no solid ground. Most modern commentators tend to agree with him. Yet these symbolic links are precisely those made by the 21st century carol Joy Has Dawned. Gold is presented as representing Jesus' kingship. Frankincense, his divinity, because of its use in the Old Testament worship to signify God's holy presence. And myrrh, his death, because of its use in funeral preparations. If there's doubt, in my mind at least, about this interpretation of these gifts and their meaning, why include them in today's devotional reflection? The answer is that there's nothing doctrinally wrong in the symbolism theory. Indeed, it remains a possible, traditional and profoundly insightful way to read the story. I might believe on my reading of Matthew that the Magi didn't worship Jesus as God, they merely paid homage to him as king. I might prefer Calvin's minimalist understanding of the Magi's gifts and their significance, but I can't be sure I'm right. Even on Calvin's say so. Matthew's Gospel is full of promises and fulfilments and links between biblical texts and ideas. Many Christians have discovered symbolic meaning in the gifts of the Magi. They might be wrong, strictly speaking, according to Matthew's intention and the Magi's intention, but the doctrinal and devotional conclusions they draw in this instance are right. And so, as my American friends say, that'll preach. On occasion, I've noticed in myself a rather superior attitude towards the words of some carols or to some things that are said by preachers at Christmas. The Bible doesn't say that. The passage doesn't mean that. 
I might be right some of the time, but other times I may be out of step with a great many other believers, and so close down to their insights. I'm not, of course, denying that the Bible should set our agenda. At Christmas, as always, it must. Nor am I saying that we can make the Bible say anything we like, or that all old traditions have always got it right. I'm merely pointing out that various forms of pride can get in the way of devotion. The wise men worship Jesus. They also opened their treasures, in Greek their thesaurus, and gave generously to him. Matthew tells us that when they saw the star resting over the place where Jesus was, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Can we share in the experiences of the Magi today? Yes, and especially when we recognise the deepest significance of the one they worshipped. The glorious king, gold. The mighty god, frankincense. And the suffering servant, myrrh. Given for us from God's own thesaurus, that we too might come to worship him.